Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. When, when, you, when do you treat a patient? I think the decision to treat is based upon several factors. One is the preference for the patient. Two is the actual manifestations on presentation, clinical manifestations, the severity of bleeding, and three, also the aspects of lifestyle for the patient. So when you may intervene in somebody who is, has a very active lifestyle may want to maintain a higher platelet count than someone who's relatively sedentary, older, and relatively inactive. Initial treatment historically has always been corticosteroids, prednisone, and most recently, large pulses of dexamethasone. And the majority of opinions suggest that patients should be considered treatment if they are not bleeding, only when platelet counts are less than 30,000. The goal of treatment for ITP is to treat active bleeding or to reduce the risk of bleeding. And so with a platelet count above 30,000, uh, there's usually uh, no clinically significant bleeding that would put a patient at risk. We do do treatment, number one, to determine the diagnosis. Um, as a response to therapy, we'll confirm a diagnosis of immune thrombocytopenia, but then to manage this bleeding risk. So uh, patients with platelet counts less than 30,000 uh, or less than 20,000 is when we usually would treat. You also have to look at the comorbidities of patient, other medications that they're on. So if patients have coronary artery disease and are on antiplatelet agents, then their risk of bleeding might be a little bit higher. You have to look at age and gender, with the bleeding risk, of course, increasing as patients advance in age. And then uh, lifestyle. In a sedentary person who's not at risk for bleeding or have other comorbidities that would predispose to bleeding, um, you know, the platelet count can really go quite low before therapy is, is needed in the range of 20 to 30,000, perhaps even lower. Uh, and on the other hand, if, if there's somebody who's very active uh, and involved in sports or playing lacrosse or hockey, you, they're probably, you want their platelet count probably up around 100,000 or so. And again, uh, you know, there's all a spectrum of, of people obviously in between those two extremes. Um, and also some people with ITP bleed more than others. Uh, there's some people with refractory ITP who I follow who haven't responded to anything and it's uncommon, it's less common than it used to be, but I've had patients with platelet counts of eight or 10,000 for years and years who never have any bleeding events. On the other hand, you may have patients up at 40 to 50,000 or thereabouts who have a lot of bruising in particular and, and sometimes bleeding as well. It may reflect the type of antibody they have that's causing their ITP and what its targets are on the platelet and how it may inhibit platelet function. So I think all these things have to be considered uh, when you think about how to treat ITP rather than just give a number or something.